Hi, Rain, how you doing? I've got your assignment up here and I just want to kind of go through this. Uh, let me get rid of that. That was from the previous student. So let's go ahead. Here's your, your layout so far. Now, uh, the first thing I noticed is there's a bunch of missing requirements here. So we're going to go through those requirements. And also, I just want to mention it's a really, really great idea. Um, if, if, you, if you find yourself um, posting later in the week, it's a great idea to go through the discussion board and take a look at my critiques and take a look at the work submitted by your peers and take a look at the critiques. There are most certainly going to be um, comments here that will pertain to your work. So I think by going through these critiques, and this is public forum, it's fair game. You, you, I mean, these are free for you to look at every one of these videos if you want to. But the point I'm, I'm trying to make here is that by going through some of these video critiques before you post your work, there's a really highly high likelihood that um, you'll learn what is missing and you'll learn from those critiques to be able to apply to your work. Okay, so as I said, there's several missing requirements. We'll take a look at the requirements and we'll take a look at typography and what we have so far. And then I'll kind of mention where we're at and where we need to be. So to take a look at the requirements, I use this little bullet list that I have compiled, right? But it's, I wanna show you where I got that information. I got that information right from the course assignment page, week four assignment for part one, specifically the information in the introductory paragraph, information, instructions, objectives, and design requirements sections of this page. So let's. Go Go ahead and open your work and we'll take a look at the requirements okay first is the object must be dominant which it is however think about cropping that image think about maybe showing i mean make it big make it interesting right um so the object must be dominant the object must be shown with somebody using it or interacting with it so you'll need to use another image of somebody holding the controller and using it. it can be a close-up of just the hands or it can be an image of somebody playing a game using the controller must show an image which is the result of using the object now there are a few students have used gaming consoles and components in as their um as their object and my recommendation to show an image which is a result of somebody using the object would be just to again to show somebody playing a video game with a big smile on their face right that would be the result i mean right we play video games because they bring us joy right uh please show uh, okay must show at least two components we are not showing any components right now you're showing that the system right i guess that is a component of i would think that the 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 controller is a component of the system not the system as a component of the controller so the component show the components i would get close-ups of the either the buttons or these buttons or these little cross buttons or the joystick or whatever just get some some components in there i uh, and since this is the object is the controller and not the gaming system itself we can't use games as a component we have to use components of the individual of the controller itself um, must include a headline design in everyday life must include a paragraph of body copy and the captions right now these are more captions I guess this is a paragraph of body copy, and I'll address the typography on this, but don't forget, you all your images should use captions. The captions should be smaller than the body copy, and it's, I would recommend presenting the captions in a italic typeface. White background only, asymmetrical design, got that. Uh, 7 by 15, got that. Imagery must come in contact with the edge of the page, some, uh, edge of the page somewhere twice. That's called a bleed. We don't have that anywhere. That is required. Um, design must combine images that are in boxes as part of a background and cropped individually. And these are just cropped individually. We don't have any boxes. I think one thing we could do is like some of those images that are missing, like uh, somebody using it or interacting with it. You could take some something out of here, like these circle buttons right here. You create circles, frames, and then place the images in there. And, and that is kind of called visual, that is called visual mimicry, which means that you're taking components from, you're taking elements from the um, uh, image and you're using it to assist you in the layout of the uh, uh, compelling engaging visual structure of the poster white background only got it 7 by 15 got it imagery must come I said that design must combine images that are by I said that full color uh, keep your image dominant and you must use a grid okay let's go ahead and take a look at the a poster itself this design in everyday life is off center it's it's a centered design and a, a, a type and remember i've been saying since week one let's now if you want to use per, uh, center 
type in a professional setting. That's completely up to the designer. But as a student, I encourage all students to stay away from center aligned type so that you can get accustomed to uh, activating the negative space associated with the typography. That's covered in class. Center type does not activate the negative space. It creates symmetry around the negative space. Um, it's not very visually engaging, and I don't recommend it. Um, also, you want to watch your, your, your letter spacing here. You really want to get in there and look at the big, giant space between the A and the Y. And other areas, too, that V and the E, huge spaces. So watch, all, remember, the first two weeks of class we spent on, on kerning and letter spacing. So you want to show what you've learned here. Um, there's no period here. That's a problem. Um, and then the, the rags here need to be adjusted. Uh, I would not include a hyphen in a text selection this small. All of this is covered in the course announcements. If we go over to week four, uh, there's four announcements for week four. Um, each one of these announcements has several video tutorials in it. My recommendation is to go through each of these and spend some time in here. All right. This shows you how to do, execute most of the <clears throat> elements on that, that list of 17 from our week four discussion. Um, so it's, it, this is a must. This is all fair game for grading from this moment on in the class. So I, I really encourage you to get in there and, and, and take all of those tutorials and understand how to execute all of the subject matter within those tutorials. Additionally, in the uh, course materials, there's three presentations this week. Counterform, typographic paragraph forming, and interaction of words with type. These are critical that you review those, okay? Um, yeah, you want to adjust your rags here. Other than that, I, I don't see three day left because it entertains. You can't play. Okay. And watch your, the, the verbiage doesn't make sense either. You want to really watch your verbiage here. Because the idea here is to get this piece, uh, to the point where you would want to include it in your student portfolio. But right now, we're not there, right? A controller is suitable for your everyday life because it entertains you can't play video games without this object. All you have to do is put it in your hand and start playing. That's called a run-on sentence. What we need to do is isolate that by punctuation, okay? A controller is suitable for everyday life because it entertains, period. One can't play video games without this object, period, or comma. All you have to do is put in your hands and start playing. And you could even use an exclamation point right there. Okay. So the point I'm trying to make is, is also this headline is really, um, I'm going to use the term pedestrian, meaning it's just really, it's not very visually engaging. Now in the videos, I, and also in the videos, in the Welcome to Week 4 announcement, there is a, a few examples. This coffee, Design in Everyday Life, is one of the examples. And in the How to Complete Assignment 4 vid, um, a course announcement, I, I deconstruct this and describe exactly why it's such a good example. But I want you to take a look at that typographic composition for the title area. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Just beautiful. Now compare that to this. And I want you to ask, and I'm not, I don't mean to sound discouraging at all, not at all, but I want you to take a look at this typographic configuration and then this. And I want you to determine for yourself which is more visually engaging. My recommendation is to try to create a, a really super interesting typographic composition for the title area. I know I've given you a lot to think about over the last nine minutes, and, and it's really to get you to really start thinking about how you can employ the tips, the tricks, the, the techniques, the tutorials, all of the course resources into your work. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and shoot for those changes to be included in your final iteration, which is due Sunday. And please, please let me know if you have any questions at all. Okay. Thank you very much.